Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for March 15, 2012, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation from the Reverend Charles Wildman, Interim Conference Minister. The 107th Psalm is the celebration of an exiled community which is returning home. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, it says. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands. The Israelites knew the meaning of exile, its shape and contours were familiar. Eager to control Jerusalem and the fertile Jordan River Basin, powerful neighbors repeatedly overpowered the small state and exiled the population to places like Babylon. The Hebrews also knew the exile of the heart, those times when their own sins left them emotionally drained and spiritually vapid. As the psalmist says in verse 17 and 18 of the psalm for today, some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their inequities endured affliction. This kind of exile is even harder to endure because it is self-inflicted. When we are in such a state, we have only to look to ourselves for blame. Yet we all have lived in this arid, lonely place parched and hungry, and in psychic or physical pain, we lament our sins and marvel at how we allowed ourselves to get into this state. We wonder if life is worth living. As we consider the pain we have caused others, we worry that we may not be able to undo the damage. Some people end their lives in this lonely exile of the soul. Others, like the psalmist, find their way home. Then they cry to the Lord in their trouble. God delivered them from destruction. This was my story. One time I was shamed by my own failure, brought on by my irresponsible actions. Walking in the rain late one night, aimlessly following a sidewalk in a strange city, I cried out to God for help. In that instant, A vision of hope and new possibilities warmed my heart. I realized that far from being over, my life was just beginning. But not everyone has a God sense. Sometimes outside help is needed to rescue an exiled soul. That's why dedicated volunteers put Gideon Bibles in hotel rooms. Others, the Quran, lifelines to grab onto. Sometimes friends or family or a total stranger is the angel of salvation. Sometimes the church, perhaps merely by its physical presence in the community, is the rescuer. Sometimes it may be you or me who saves another by noticing, caring, risking, And in the process, we may find that the hopeless person is not the only one who is released from exile. Here is a prayer for this week. O God, release us from exile to homecoming. Amen. In the news this week, this coming Sunday, United Church of Christ congregations across the nation will receive the One Great Hour of Sharing offering. These gifts enable ministries of critical presence near and far, disaster response, fresh water projects, medical care, microcredit, and more. When you have the opportunity, please give generously. Sharing brings joy to us to others, and to God.
Occupy New Haven supporters who assembled on the New Haven Green yesterday, expecting to see the 151-day-old encampment dismantled, celebrated a reprieve instead when U.S. District Court Judge Janet Hall issued a temporary restraining order that delays the eviction to March 28th. Last Sunday evening, about 20 local church members extended a long day to engage in a serious discussion of proposed changes to the UCC's constitution and bylaws, changes which are intended to significantly simplify governance of the church's national setting. Voted by General Synod 28 last summer, the revisions must now be ratified by two-thirds of the conferences to go into effect. Norfield pastor, the Reverend Bernard Wilson, who chaired the Unified Governance Working Group, strongly urged those in attendance to an affirmative vote. And I would submit, again, standing still is not an option for us. Remaining where we are is going to be very, very harmful to this church. Connecticut Conference delegates will consider the measure at the spring meeting on May 12th in Suffield. Churches are not generally noted for their willingness to change, but even this truism is being forced to adapt in a fast-changing world. According to a new study by Hartford Seminary Professor Scott Thuma, a large majority of American congregations have adopted new communications technologies. Those who have not, says the report, are likely to be perceived as out of sync with the contemporary world. During an online news conference this week, Thuma said, Technology is the world we live in now, and it is not a luxury for congregations. Use of internet technologies, he believes, signals to folks that faith and religion and religious life at this congregation is congruent with their everyday lives. On Tuesday morning, healthcare advocates gathered once again outside the meeting of the Sustenet Healthcare Cabinet to bear witness to the urgent need. Members of the Interfaith Universal Healthcare Fellowship led the group in a memorial service, raising the names of those who have died for lack of appropriate, affordable medical care. We remember and honor people of all faiths who wanted to live decent, productive lives, who wanted to love their God and respond to their God's call in their hearts, who expected to give back to their congregations and their communities much more than they would ever receive. But for the brokenness in the system, they would be with us here today. In other headlines, the deans for this summer's conferences gathered at Silver Lake last weekend, learning new skills, sharing wisdom with each other, and beginning the nitty-gritty work of scheduling and planning that is so important in creating the wonderful experiences to be offered to this summer's conferees. Silver Lake registration is already open. Learn more about this summer's offerings and sign up at silverlakect.org. You can always see the headlines that are current in the conference at ctucc.org news. The Orange Congregational Church hosts a green symposium on environmental ministries this Saturday. Registration for March in the Sun, our day of workshops for local church leaders, is sadly full. The event will be held on March 24th. Hartford Seminary offers an information day on their Doctor of Ministry program on March 26th. As we mentioned before, registration is open for summer conferences at Silver Lake and also for four retreat and work opportunities coming up this spring. The Maple Sugaring Retreat is next weekend, March 23rd through 25th. The Spring Women's Yoga and Music Retreat runs April 13th through 15th. Spring Action Weekend starts on April 27th, and a new men's retreat called On the Edge of Fire runs the weekend of May 4th. Learn more about and register for these at silverlakect.org. The next Stepping Stones program, celebrating Sundays with children, will be held March 26th in Southington. Email, websites, and social networks, oh my, is the title for a day-long workshop on communication for churches to be held in New Britain on April 14th. Green Teams Unite! gives local church environmental ministry leaders an opportunity to share stories and ideas in Middletown on April 21st. 
CT Women of the UCC hold their annual meeting on April 28th. May is just a busy month. Boundary training for authorized ministers on the 3rd. The Church Historians Workshop on the 5th. A still speaking presentation on the 5th. And the New England Association of United Church Educators event, Welcoming the Living Stone, runs May 8th through 10th in Craigville, Massachusetts. The second annual Youth Revival will be held in Hartford on May 11th, and the spring meeting of the Connecticut Conference featuring keynote speaker Lillian Daniel is May 12th in Suffield. Sign up now for the National Youth Event. This amazing gathering of youth ages 13 through 18 will be held July 10th through 14th at Purdue University. We're taking registrations, we're granting scholarships, we've got two bus trips to get young people to these five days of dynamic workshops, inspiring worship, hands-on service projects, and rockin' recreation and music. The service bus includes a stop in Cleveland, Ohio for a mission project and to tour the UCC's national offices there. The express bus leaves a little later and goes straight on to Purdue. There's more information at ctucc.org slash n-y-e. As always, you can learn more about what's coming up in the Connecticut Conference at ctucc.org slash events. And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to Chuck Wildman for his reflection and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for Conference Cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, basic support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God.